Hello, everybody. Thank you for coming. You all, ten people, most of them work for the town of Worcester, Worcester County Regional. Uh, we've, this is our second meeting. We are here for two reasons. One is to introduce a potential bus service to Grafton through the WRTA and solicit questions and or feedback. Um, I'm Tim McInerney, I'm the town administrator. We have Jonathan Church, Bob O'Neill, Mary Ellen Blunt, correct? Um, they're going to talk about the proposed service that will start Northbridge and go to the MBTA station and or Tufts and or Job Corps. We did reach out to those folks too and invited them again tonight, yeah. but for whatever reason, scheduling for them, they couldn't get here. Uh, some of you didn't attend the last meeting we had at Town Hall a month ago, so I'll let these folks tell you the logistics of it all and some costs, some fixed routes where we would go, where the stops might be. All of these things are subject to input and discussion with the community overall. We just don't want to make these decisions mm -hmm. in a vacuum. So that's why, you know, we drove the bus pretty much to get here and say, let's let's get some input from the community before we in, embark on a service level like this. So. Uh, People who end up watching this broadcast, we want you to email us and tell us what you hear tonight is good, bad, and different, what we can do to enhance it to, to attract people who want ridership is the most important thing. Uh, it is a central component to economic development for us, and we do think there are some people that will utilize the system, but until we get the feedback, we'll just never know. Um, so with that, I think it's a yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. so I'm just gonna say, first, first things first, um, he was a very, very busy guy, and uh, I, I wouldn't want his job. He's got a lot to do, but it's Steve O'Neill. Bob O'Neill is a good quarterback, and I had nothing to do with him. He is the director of ICMA, too, so it's all my fault. He's a good quarterback and CPS. CPS back in the day, so um, I couldn't carry his, you know, what, so I'll leave it like that. But um, I want to thank you, man. Obviously, tonight we'll, we'll be quick. We'll, we'll take our time, whatever he wants to do, we'll talk about. But before we begin, I just want to compliment you on I was talking to Tim before the meeting started. This is a beautiful building. Beautiful yeah. building. For those of you who are responsible for it, nice job. Very nice job. Yeah. This beautiful building. Um, my compliments for saving the, the design look like the original features here. But, but we didn't come here to talk about that. We came here to talk about service to Grafton. And the good news is we're getting some more dollars, it looks like, for a new service. And what we want to do is not spend it necessarily in the city of Worcester, but to spend it in the towns. So we've been going around to the towns. We've been out to Grafton. This will be our second time. We've been to Northbridge twice. Northbridge was not a member of the WRTA. They voted to join the RTA, so they're a member of us now. We've been to Paxton. We've been to Millbury. Uh, we are talking to Westboro right now. Uh, so we're trying to branch out into the, into the community. So. What we've done is, uh, the last meeting about a month ago, as Tim said, we, we came up with some ideas. We had that meeting at the uh, municipal facility down the street, and that's a good turnout, good comments, but we want to get back out. As Tim said, you can't do enough of this. Um, and I, my, my thanks to him and others for being on uh, cable access here to get input. So what we want to do is we want your feedback. We want to make sure what we put out there makes sense and it is, is as a result of what the people asked us to do. So. Um, we, want to, we want to be very deliberate with this and not do something until we feel we're ready to do it. That's we collectively. Um, so what we want to do tonight, just take your really what we went through about a month ago and then go over the questions and comments that we heard from that last meeting and then open it up to you, take any other further comments. Today is not the end, it's the beginning, so if you have other questions you think about when you get home, so yeah, I should have asked. They didn't, they didn't think of it. Let us know. We have, uh, we'll leave our cards and members and call us and we'll be happy to put that in place, okay? So I'm going to turn over to John Church and walk you through what we talked about the last night. All right, thank you. <coughs> uh, thank you, everybody. I'm John the Church. I'm with the Central Mass Regional Planning Commission. And uh, just to uh, give you some highlights uh, from what the route is, uh, just a quick overview. It's, it's a 12 and a half mile route from uh, starting south of the center of Whitensville, right outside of uh, Town Hall in Northbridge. Uh, which would then uh, head over to Plumber's Corner and head right up 122 all the way through uh, Grafton, through Fisherville, Grafton Center, and then up into North Grafton and ending at the commuter rail station, Tufts, and Job Corps. We are proposing a 30 to 45 minute headway 
Uh, that way we could try to time it as much as possible with the existing commuter rail schedule. However, we do know that that schedule will be changing later this year due to the uh, increase in number of trains that are coming to uh, the Western Line. Uh, we will be looking at using a minibus or a van to uh, start for the service, which could then expand uh, a larger vehicle depending on how the service grows. And we're potentially looking at hours from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Uh, for uh, the operating times of the service. And we've also had uh, discussions about deviating off of the route to accommodate anybody who may be uh, uh, in need of, uh, can't get to the route itself uh, for either ADA purposes or uh, disability and that sort of thing. So that's, that's a quick overview of the route. And uh, when we had our meeting on, uh, about a month ago, uh, we did hear a, uh, a lot of great feedback uh, from those who attended, and we found that uh, there was a, a big push for people to be able to get to the Grafton Public Library in the center of town. Uh, so that was uh, looking at doing that uh, because of the uh, 56,000 people that they get in foot traffic about a month. Um, there was a need to service both schools and the municipal center, which we tried to accommodate, as, uh, certainly the municipal center and as many schools as possible. Um, there was a, a question about getting the Worcester, uh, student, uh, drafting high school students uh, to the Worcester line and setting up some type of a discount uh, for that. The WRTA would be would have to look at doing a discount for the bus, but any discount on the commuter rail line would have to be negotiated with the MBTA as they operate that line. Uh, there is, uh, there was someone brought up the uh, Saturday, possible Saturday service for an urban harvest, urban youth that come out to Grafton, uh, I think it was through the Job Corps, or up in the Job Corps area, and uh, certainly talking to Job Corps, which we, we plan to do. In, uh, in the near future. Uh, quite a, a couple of people brought up at the meeting on, uh, in February that um, access to the Worcester system um, didn't seem to be shown on this map, and that is true. Uh, we are looking at doing this as an independent route. However, there did seem to be a lot of interest about that, and um, I know it's kind of hard to see with this uh, small printed map, but um, Route 22, which goes into Millbury Center now, and uh, Route 5, which currently ends on Route 20 in Worcester, um, are just to the west of this map here. Uh, and there was interest by some people in attendance that there could be possible connections with those routes or extending those routes further to meet up in Grafton. Uh, Uh, the fair, would, uh, we're still in uh, discussions about what the fair would be to, uh, to ride the service. Uh, we're looking at somewhere in the dollar fifty range, which is the current uh, fixed group price. Uh, we would have no interference with the Grafton uh, COA's vehicle, which currently runs for the seniors. That would still be an independent service and would not be affected by this at all. Uh, it could uh, Complement. It could complement, it would complement, would uh, certainly do that. And we'd be looking to do uh, marketing of the uh, service to the town uh, residents and to uh, certain, you know, targeted groups, school kids, uh, youth groups, that sort of thing. Uh, certainly we were wondering about uh, what the uh, types of vehicles, I, mean, I did mention the vans, uh, there was some concern about some of the larger fixed route buses being gaudy. Uh, and there was questions about uh, where stops would be located and we certainly would uh, work with the planning board to help locate those bus stops. Uh, that was essentially it in a nutshell. Mm -hmm. So were um, there uh, some suggestions or questions about anything to commuter rail that you were talking about at the station? Time? I did. Uh, the times would be to link with the existing uh, commuter rail system, uh, which is on the schedule now, and they could the link would be then provided into Worcester via the train. Uh, it's what we're examining now. So we'll uh, look at that and see if there's any other feedback that we can receive on that. Can you talk about the, with any shelters along the way that we would consider, or I don't know if that's more of a bigger city feature, or? No, no it's, it's not. Uh, typically we look at uh, ridership for a shelter, but we have located them at, at the ends of routes. 
Uh, and certainly in a place where there is high traffic, pedestrian traffic that can warrant them. Uh, we just recently put up a shelter in downtown mm -hmm. Melbury outside of the senior center there. I mean, outside of the senior housing. Okay. Uh, so that's it's something that we, we are open to. Yeah. And, and typically what we like to do in that town is um, WRT would buy a shelter and the uh, town would make a bad in install the shelter and take care of it. What about advertising on the inside of it? Yeah, you want it, you want it, want it <laughs> we'll take 90% and give it 10% back, but that's okay. The 90 rule, huh? Yeah. Uh, what about the mobile apps and uh, when a bus is coming and how quickly I need to get outside of my house, that stuff? That we, uh, we talked about that at the last meeting as well. Uh, we would be able to put in uh, a kiosk, which is essentially a flat screen TV that would be uh, ideally located, we talked about it being at the library, so that we could track where the bus would be coming close to any certain point on the stop. Um, in regards to the mobile app, uh, we we're going to try going to, to try work, to work something, something with that. That's it, because we don't have it on the van services <laughs> right now. We have the GPS on the van services. We just don't have that open system like we have on the buses. We think we can adapt it, so we've got our tech person okay. working okay. on that. Yeah. I got to be helpful, especially that you know if it was every two and a half hours you're going to stop. You know, six so minutes before that, someone knows they can work on their phone. Right. I, I don't know what the demographic is, so I don't know what, who, you know what I mean, with the correlation between mobile phone users and an iPhone or uh, uh, it Detroit works, versus. It works on both. It's yeah. Like it's, uh, we've typically been able to see uh, both any type of smartphone be able to use it. So, um, I mean, certainly the demographics. It's the texting on the Android, and it's the, you can get the picture on the iPhone. The QR code on the yeah. iPhone. Yeah. But I, got, I guess my question is more so it's, you do have riders that have that technology. I yeah. guess that's, you obviously built it so they could. Yes, right? yes. Yeah. yes, we do. I don't know if I have those same constituents who graft and already been well bridge too. You know what I mean? I, I, I guess it's part of the survey that we need to get to. I would you uh, do. Uh, well, for the most part, you, you tend to think that, uh, no offense to anyone here, I have great hair too, so don't, 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 don't shoot me. Um, <laughs> But it's the, it's the, you know, 30, I'd say 20 to 35 in really heavy use of the Androids and the, the iPhones. Um, and that's the only you get the, say, I'm so, older than that. Okay, so, um, so that it's a wide spectrum, but the heavier use is going to be in the Android demographic. Does that help you? Well, what's your demographic for like bus service? Is it the same, is it the same age? Or it, or yeah, we're, we're, it's, we're seeing a heavy use. Um, I'll put it this way to answer your question. The first time we put out the QR codes, the quick response codes, um, we had seven out, we had 14 hits the next day. Um, a month later, we had 200, and it's been growing like this. I think last week, we hit up to 1,500 hits on uh, text and iPhones. Okay. That's good to know. That's a good feature. We, we want it anyways. We want to embrace it. Right. Right. Yeah, I think it, it, because it's it's such a new service that the RTA has provided, it, it seems to be catching on with more and more people. And uh, the, the range and age of the people who use it, if, you know, when they learn they can use both text or the QR code. If you don't have a smartphone, you can use the text or you can just call. The signs that we put out in the, in the city have shown uh, a number where they can call directly and, and talk to somebody once my next bus coming to this stop it. You know, it's not 300. Oh, that's even more. So it's, it's, it's <laughs> universal in that, in, yeah. that way, in that way. And the last thing you can do is go on site, the website. That gives you updated information. Too. You want to talk about the funding and the, the charges from the cherry sheet and all that stuff so folks know that there's no tax dollars from, you know, yep. municipal property tax being sure. used to fund it. We're, we're looking to fund this service with uh, MBTA assessment dollars that are currently on the cherry sheets for both Grafton and Northbridge. Um, they would pay for the service within each of the communities, uh, and we'd be looking to uh, start that at, a, at lower than what it is so that we have room to grow in, uh, in providing more services that, as the demand catches on. Yeah, I would just add to that. It's basically dollars that are sitting on the table right now that are not being used. So we're going to say, let's put it to use. So that's what we're knocking on town's door right now and saying, hey, why are you letting this money just lie out if you put, put the good use? That's what you're But towns have actually have extra money laying around. Well, I, I can't speak for this town manager, but in this case, uh, he probably had not had a use because I've been telling him 
we can't do any disservice. Uh, we're at a point where we can, so I'm knocking on the store and say, Mr. Manager, can we uh, use these dollars you know, to provide the service for your community? So saying the town of Grafton does have some kind of money laying around, as you say, what uh, kind of money are we talking about? For the town of Grafton, correct me? Yeah, correct. it's about 107, yeah. It's about 100,000 bucks, and it's out, it, the state of Massachusetts gives money to, to local municipalities from Chapter 70, which is for schools. That's a lot of our money, about 10 million bucks. Mm -hmm. Now they have uh, money for unrestricted local aid, it's about a million seven. So run, it comes from the lottery money, basically. And on the back side of that sheet is called charges and assessments, and they take money back from what they gave you on the front side of the sheet. I just think this is funny. This is funny. <laughs> but I'm learning more and more and more uh, how to get more <laughs> Yeah, well, I, I'm trying to give you a, a quick overview of it. So the back side has all these challenge assessments. One of them is the MBT assessment that Jonathan referred to. And for 10 years, we've been assessed at about 100 grand a year. And you can only use it to add to, enhance, uh, or institute new Producer. paratransit uh, abilities. So this is obviously never had it, so it's new. So you can use these dollars for those particular pieces. So instead of the assessment being charged and just hanging on the back of that sheet, WRTA will get that money to provide that service to the town. Yes. I've heard about this thing for a little while now. And I thought it was a pretty good idea. But the thought in the back of my mind is where's the money going to come from to pay for this and how much is it going to be? And the thought in the back of my mind is what does it cost to run a bus? What do they pay to drive us? What's it cost for the maintenance? How many people are you going to transport on this thing to support it? Or if it doesn't support itself, is it going to come back on me as a taxpayer to support it? So, so, so those are all good questions. Yes. That's why I'm here tonight. Let's, let's start with the first one. And right off the bat, we'll say that in no instance, any of our routes, and we have 25 routes right now, in no instance do those route, are those routes supported by any of the Fairbox revenue. This does not happen. And that's not unique to Worcester. That's, that happens throughout the country. So that's number one. So these are heavily subsidized. Number two is um, we don't know what the cost is right now, so you tell us what you want, and we go back and kind of say, okay, this is what they're landing on. We'll figure that out. But it is the driver cost, it's the fuel that's assigned to that mm -hmm. bus. Those are, uh, those are the costs. And our drivers make, roughly, uh, senior drivers make fifty-five, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 a year. Okay, senior drivers probably get 25 plus years in the system. All right? Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, what else? What else? So, uh, and then if, 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 that, if, that, if that money dries out, okay, so that's dries out, how's it come back to me? So, What's so it going to cost it, me? It, it, that, what we're doing, as the manager said, we have roughly hundred thousand dollars. We're going to build a system that does not go up to that hundred thousand dollars. We'll back from that, so it'll allow us to have growth in it. So let's say we end up with a fifty thousand dollar cost to the town of the hundred thousand dollars. We have growth another fifty thousand until we hit that hundred thousand dollars. After that, it goes in excess of that, and it's up to us to work with the town to work that out. The deal is on that; it's a seventy-five twenty-five split. So if you have a service that you all say 10 years from now like and you want to add to that and we're above 100,000, we have to work with the town manager and come up with that contribution from the town, which is roughly 25%. Okay. But until that time, the MBTA assessment is what's going to be used. And you're already paying for that, you're already getting it, so let's use it. That's what I'm, we're coming from. Okay. The same holds true for Northbridge. We have about just over 100,000 as well, so we would be backing off of that as well, and they would contribute for the portion that runs in their town. And Grafton would be in the air, and then we'd have to be on both sides. In a pared down version of this, I did it in Salisbury and Mass too. It's called the Bring and Ride Service. So if someone could call 24 hours ahead, and they can get picked up pretty much door to door. It's not that's not our goal with this, but certainly either. It can parity it or it can be paired up or pared down as the case may be to do something like that. So you, we, we could have that type of a service where you can call 24 hours in advance, we get to your door, we get you still pay a fare, mm -hmm. but it, it, you minimize all that exposure, both the growth and the root over the 10 year period or however long it may be. We, we just don't know what that right. will hold. And that's why I think that the survey is important and these outreach meetings are important and being on TV is important so people can ask that same question. Look, and feel comfortable with the growth and the cost 
going forward. So eventually, we're going to get to a point after these meetings, we get to all the feedback. We're going to come up with a, uh, a group. And we'll cost that out for all of you. We'll present it to the town meeting. And we'll, if you want, we can walk every one through that through another meeting like this and show you what the costs are for the driver, for the fuel, uh, for the time, the morning times that we're going to have, uh, everything. And you'll see what it's going to cost. And we'll project it out by year until the money runs out. And will you do the revenue, though, if you have ridership? There will be a projection on revenue. Yeah, we'll put that on the, in there as well. Right. Yes. Well, <laughs> just say <saying> it. <laughs> <laughs> Looking at your map here. Yes. You're going from Northbridge up through the Valley Towns here, Northbridge, South Grafton, Grafton Center, up to the rail station. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, the people can get the rail to go into Boston. Mm -hmm. I, I don't assume they'll take the train to go into Worcester. It's, it's only a short distance, right? Now, if I was taking a, the bus and they go to the rail station and I want to go to Fenway Park with that, it goes by because I've already done it. Mm -hmm. And if the ball game lasts longer yes. than a certain amount of time, that train does not go to Grafton. Yeah. Uh, so tell the pitches to pitch faster. <laughs> if they're not going to grab it, they'll go as far as Framingham. I think, I think you that's can't, changed. You get in Framingham, you're there. Yeah, I, try to try. I, th I think that's changed now. Well, I, think, I don't know. Last I think, time I took it, it wasn't. But but I, I think they now run. will hold that train, and then they will. They do go well, as far as The thing is, is, what I want to know is, all right, we're taking the train back to Grafton. Yep. If they're going to be a bus there to pick them up, we, night. Or what time? Or what time is your bus is going to stop running? Right now, we're saying six p.m. at night. So well, six to six. Okay. okay. So we can't. Uh, if that's something you want to do, well, the, the other thing is, okay. so I, 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 that, that's a little bit. My other concern is taking a bus to go to Blackstone Mall. <coughs> right up here in Millbury, you can get a transfer to get the bus to go into City Hall in Worcester. People can do what they want, get back on the bus at City Hall, that goes to the mall, and they can catch the other bus that take them back down through the Blackstone Valley. I think that makes more sense than going from Northbridge to the railroad station. For what? The train. For the, the train. You know, you get the train. But if you're, not, if you're going to get off at 6 o'clock at night, it's not worth it. To dovetail to you, when you say the bus starts at 6.30 in the morning, I take a look at the train station schedule and I say, well, I got to be leaving the house in South Grafton at 5.30 in order to catch the first express train into the city. So I don't think your bus is going to go from South Grafton, hit a stop, in terms of timing, and the train ain't going to wait for the bus. Right? Mm -hmm. So I would suggest that when the new, and I know I keep waiting to have the new train schedule come out from Worcester to say, you know, the bus from Northbridge is going to hit that rail station in time for the first commuter, first express train. And I know, you know, that's a schedule thing to work out. And also to say, you know, when is that in the evening? And I can understand, you know, we can't be running a bus at 11 o'clock at night because, you know, it's just, you know, there's no going to be no riders for that late game. But also to say, take a look at the rail lines, how, you know, when's the last express train, but then also what's the numbers, and I bet, the town manager could find out pretty easy to say, what are the numbers coming out for, like, what's the last heavy train of commuters coming out from Grafton? Is it six? Is it seven? And tie that in mm -hmm. to that. Mm -hmm. Also, in looking at that, and this is in terms of pure being selfish, as I live off of Millsburg Road and we've got the condos up there and those houses, we don't have a sidewalk down to those lines. And I say to myself, and I look at the line, I can say, you know, we want to have the line go to the heavy populated areas to say, can we, you know, how can we look to say, you know, some additional funding to say, build sidewalks so people who can walk, people who are riding a bike, can get to the bus stop, put their bus on the bike or in front of the bus, go up to where they want to go, and hop back. And, you know, your brain, as I see, is whirling now as you're thinking about that. The other part for that, and I had asked this before the camera came on, and I don't know, because I don't have my kids are not in high school yet. Does the high school have a late bus? Kids stays late for sports. Kids stays late to work on help, extra help. Do we have that now? And then this bus goes right by the high school in the middle school. 
And it would be an excellent way to alleviate that, to say, okay, we're going to have the bus come after, you know, the sporting events are over, whatever that will be. And so it can relieve the parents of trying to rush all everyone in there. Kids could hop on the bus and get within walking distance, and teenagers can walk up that extra half mile. Your, your second point about the schools, that was brought up at the last meeting, uh, okay. and that was something that did seem to have a lot of support from the people who did attend the meeting uh, previously, and that was something that they absolutely looked at strongly. Uh, your comment about getting to the early morning train, and certainly the later trains at night, um, mm -hmm. that that is a valid comment, and I, I think that is something that we would need to take into consideration because uh, the commuter rail system as it stands now is primarily very heavy in the morning, eastbound, heavier at night, westbound, uh, to graph. And so uh, maybe, you know, taking into those considerations, maybe we look at doing some type of a, a break in the day, you know, maybe we run, you know, 5.30 a.m. to, you know, spitballing 11, and then you have a break till 2, and then you're 2 to 7 or something like that. If you could work the money out that way in, in terms of operation. That, that's something we can look at for Do these small buses, can they accommodate a bike? He's got to think about bikes and sidewalks, but... The vans cannot accommodate bikes. Okay. The vans, you talk about. The vans cannot accommodate bikes. All the buses have... The buses have racks. Full buses have racks. Yeah, they old two bikes. How tough is it to put a rack on the front of the van? But, you know, it's a good question. I mean, it doesn't... Actually, we never ask a question. We can look at that. It doesn't look... It doesn't look that technically. It's all maybe there's something hidden that I don't see. I would assume on the vans it'd be more pliable to put one on the back. The vans are a lot shorter on the front than putting oh, something like that. Well, we also have, yeah, we also have the emergency doors in right. the back. So, oh, okay. um, but we did we did have um, some on older older vehicles that were van like. Mm -hmm. that we don't have any more. Are there still uh, uh, restrictions on bikes on the MBT during peak hours too? There. Yes. Yes, there is. I thought there was. There's been a lot of talk for a long time about using that restriction, but on the commuter rail, they still have the peak hour restrictions. For Do you park at the station? No, I no, I don't, but thinking about for my wife in the future and for other people. No, I know, I'm just I'm trying to figure out, because that's where I really think the survey needs to get to of those people, and I'm trying to figure out how I get those people to tell me what their story is, you know, how early they get there, how late they're coming home. Mm -hmm. Well, one, way, one way you might do is is uh, somehow post it there, but uh, put the survey on Survey Monkey. That's what's yeah, 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 we want to do so that. So if yeah. they, if you just put some posters up or somehow like right where, at the platform areas where they're waiting when they get on, a lot of them will have the smartphones and they can fill out the surveys right on their smartphones. Sounds like you need a friendly intern to go down there and just say, hey, we want your input. This is what we're thinking of. You know, please, you know, let the graphic nights know. Just, you know, do, do yeah. that a couple of days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and the people on the return, what would they want? For the bus stops, I had seen, like, in Westboro, for like a condominium complex, that the, it was rather obvious that the condominium built it because it had colonial features and it was fancy and it wasn't some plexiglass thing. And I see that people who have it do the head nods of yes, they have seen that too. Yeah. And I heard about you know creating the bus stops here and that, you know, Grafton makes the pad, gets put on there, but is it restricted to that or to say, you know, in front of the apartment buildings and say, hey, you know, you can have this thing or you can upgrade it on your own and have it fit into the grafting community, feel more grafting-ish, whatever architecture no, that good, would be. That's a good, that's a good point. I, I guess my answer to that, we haven't been down this road before, but you know, we know when an upper limit of a shelter we expend on, say, ten, twelve thousand dollars And if there was something more expensive than that, and I think we'd work with the town manager to say the delta on what it would be for that more expensive, one versus what we would pay would be one by a time. But, um, you know, because this could get very expensive for us mm -hmm. to go into all these towns and have their own type of shelter. I think you're right on the point there. I mean, you know, Cape Cod does a lot of that type of thing. The, the individual towns have their own unique features and they want to keep those things. So, mm -hmm. we're not that. I'm not saying the town doesn't. <coughs> I'm saying that, you know, you say, hey, you know, apartment owner, 
you know, guys going to college. And, and that could, you, could, yeah. could you pull the extra cost off the charity sheet? I don't know. It's just a service. Yeah, it's a service only. Okay. Good question, though. Thank, thank you, thank you. He's up to We paid a lot of money with that. Well, I can remember when the MBTA came in, the Board of Selectmen, the town of Grafton here, we're going to expand our rail service from Framingham to Worcester. No, there's not going to be any charge to the town of Grafton. Ah, uh, what a joke. <laughs> a year later, bingo, we got zapped. <laughs> oh, yeah. Ha, ha. I laughed right at their face that night. Right? The guys that went, well, oh, no, no charge to the town. We're going, this is it, the service and everything else. A year later, bingo. We work for the WRTA. <laughs> what, were the, what, were the, what was the charge of what happened? I don't know. I, well, what happened was uh, they had a lot of problems, so they started assessing the towns. Every time the MBTA had a problem of uh, a breakdown or this or that or some other damn thing, they assessed the towns. Yeah. Boom, you're on the tracks. Look at the town of Wilby. They pay, uh, what is it, about 45, 40, 45, 46,000 a year. They don't have a real station. Right, with the MBTA. They didn't. come to Grafton. What they did in 2000 was they went from there. But because the train was too little, they didn't get paid. 275, and they assessed the communities that had rail stations in them uh, higher, but they also went one town out from a community. So, the so. so that's how Northbridge got assessed. That's how um, Shrewsbury <coughs> gets assessed. That's how North Road gets assessed. They, they're all one town out. And that, that, that's what happened with Millbury. They were one town out from both Grafton and Worcester, so they got you, assessed as well. You take. Uh, if you get into Northbridge, uh, get to the senior center down there and say, hey, we're gonna, we have a bus that will take you to the Blackstone Mall. You'll see, be surprised how many seniors will take that bus because they won't drive up there. Boy, we're on a holiday, or you could have suicide. <laughs> but you take a bus up there for the senior citizens, you know, and yeah. they, they got a schedule, they can go do their shopping and get yeah. back, the bus is there, get on the bus and bingo home, yeah. or they want to go into the city, you get a transfer to get on the other bus that takes you right to City Hall. Come back from City Hall, they got a bus that City Hall says Blackstone Valley Mall. Get on here, bingo. So, tell them what the, uh, you might want to hire them. Bus. I think you're going to hire them. Hey, I don't know. That's bus service. Oh, yeah, yeah, I used to drive for cows from. Uh, so we had one of the buses burning the back, yeah. Maybe, uh, maybe uh, I'm not sure how much we all know, the WRTA is in the process of completing its new transfer hub at Union Station. Uh, so we will be opening that uh, fairly soon. And uh, that will have all of the routes hubbed there uh, for connection with Amtrak, commuter rail, Peter Pan bus. Uh, so what we're thinking, at least at this point now, is if you were to go from here to Worcester on the train, you could then connect to another bus in the city. Um, but we hit it here at the last meeting, we seem to be hearing that again, is that if we had other routes that came down or we'll, we'll be going to the Blackstone Valley shops to connect into other routes that are already servicing that uh, mall, um, there would be additional opportunities for transfer. And it's a, a brand new facility that has uh, first time ever enclosed uh, waiting areas, uh, passenger amenities for uh, our riders and uh, certainly much easier to make connections to other transportation without the use of a car. Yeah. In terms of ridership, uh, with JetBlue coming to Worcester Regional, any, <laughs> any impacts that you guys have thought of? Well, we, we, will be, we have a bus that goes to Worcester Airport and will continue to do so. Um, right now it's the ninth, uh, right now it's the 19th. Uh, we'll be changing over to the 6, which is a more direct way um, when the hub opens. Uh, and that would be a connection that could be made up to uh, Worcester Airport. So if, if someone wanted to go up to that airport, they would take the train west to Worcester and get off and then go to and then take the Union Station to that bus and go to the airport that way. Yeah. That's not yeah. horrible. I mean, it's two, it's two, two transfers, days. but it's it's doable. Yeah. Huh. And the MBTA is looking to put in uh, 20 trains a day, 20 trains to Worcester and to Boston. So. That would be more frequency throughout the day than currently. Yeah. Um, when do we anticipate that schedule to come out? <sighs> That's what we've been trying to nail down with the T and they're very tight you know, my, about my, it. my guess is it's probably going to wait until this work with the legislature ends. And that's probably gonna be in June. What I'm talking about is the budget. The budget. <laughs> <laughs> so how's that how's that five hundred million? Senate's talking about 800 million, 
So it's going to go into conference committee and then it'll come out, uh, you know, April, not April, but uh, May or June. And then I think once they find out what the money is they're getting and they pay off the debt of the T and what's left over after that with all the other projects, and then I think you'll see something coming up probably in the summertime or early, early fall. Yeah, we've been told that the uh, it's going to be early fall at the very earliest that they, um, they're really going to totally revamp the schedules when they stop putting in these extra trains. They're supposed to be adding one more train this spring. This spring. We haven't seen we that haven't one seen yet. That but it's in the fall schedule, they'll change the timing of all the trains. It's going to be a complete new schedule. What are some concerns that Northbridge has brought up that, that are different from what we have said? So we can hear what they're thinking. We, we just had some very preliminary discussions with them. We haven't had any detailed ones. We were two meeting two weeks. We have that meeting two three weeks from tonight at the uh, alternatives on Monday. We did hear what this gentleman said was right. to link up to the, to the mall. So yep. it's good to hear that you know, we seem to be on the right path to that. Right. But nothing more extensive than that. But we'll be happy to share with you what our, what our findings are after we have the meeting. Um, okay. Going from uh, <coughs> Tufts uh, Rail Station, they can go over 120. Stay Route 30, pick up 122. 122 will bring it right down to Wheelock Ave. That's where the bus run now. Wheelock Ave's coming out of Worcester, goes it's down Wheelock. Yeah, we, we lost that. We lost the turnaround on Wheelock Ave, so we had to. We well, you had, lost that? We did, so we had to pull it back to uh, where 122 meets up with Route 20, on that uh, right before Mrs. Yeah. Max Bakery. And if we take it to the what was the big wide plaza, they and took the big wide is gone, but we, oh, we turned it around. around. We took it around. Believe it or not, some people don't like the buses. So yeah, well, I know, but so the owner. I can remember when they stopped doing the buses. Everybody was crying. What the hell? It was only carrying three or four people. <laughs> oh, we're going to stop the buses. How are we going to do this? How are we going? To? Oh, right after the war, everybody got a car, <laughs> and that was it. So how much are you charging here for for salary? Bus <laughs> 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 bus lines in Westbrook. Yeah. Well, while they worked at General Motors and we worked at Framingham, and when they had a changeover, you're out of work for five or six weeks. <clears throat> I had a family, so I got a job driving a bus. And I used to drive the 515 out of Westbrook into Worcester to Salem Square and come back, pick up all the passengers that are going to. North Rapton, Rapton Center, and then into Westboro. Yes. And then they had to, then uh, Johnson bus line had the bus run from uh, Milford to Worcester. Right. And Carlson bought that. And that was a bus run. I did that run a couple of times. Then I had one, <laughs> I had a lady, well, she used to be on town council at Double Maroney. She'd get on a bus this day and drive it into Worcester. And I, she used to get off at Our Lady of Lord's Church. <clears throat> well, I'd pick her up there. And I said to her one day, I says, how come you don't drive your car into to, to the city? Oh, my mother won't let me. <laughs> She'd take the bus from Our Lady of Lord's right into, the, right into the center of the city. <laughs> my mother won't let her drive a, a new car, new Buick, anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> into the city. <laughs> That's it. <clears throat> I have a question. You know, uh, you're setting up, probably think about the schedule. Uh, going over to the uh, Tufts area, the train station, but during the day, I'm sure the trains aren't running that often. That, right. You know, the bus has to go there. Like Phil said, if there was one or two or whatever the amount of buses that are going to be running within that 12-hour period, if there was one, just diverted up to the, the mall, up to the uh, shops. If there's no train running, uh, apparently there won't be any need to drop people. Well, people are taking, up there. A, taking a train will go to Boston, they won't take the train to go to Worcester. That'd be no, but if they went up to the mall, well, they'd always take a bus, bus from the mall. mall downtown. Well, well, yeah, downtown, they get a transfer. You bring it right to City Hall, they get up to City Hall, they do what they got to do, get the other bus that goes back and right back up the mall. And get the bus from the mall, hit the mall, and bring it back down through the valley. Yeah, you got 122A, you got 122. Mm -hmm. But if you lost the turnaround on Willock Ave, because I see the bus today at Milbury when I was at Milbury, I see the bus today was going, uh, Main Street. Mm -hmm. you know, it was made the turn 
I can't think of the name of the damn freak now. Elm Street? He was going, headed towards Willock. He was going back to City Hall. It was my City Hall. Oh, not Massasoit. Uh, uh, no. Well, that's Massasoit. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, yeah, going down that, by Massasoit Road, but he was going to. He was headed for City Hall. Oh, 22. Oh, 22. 22. 122. 122. Yeah, 122A in Newbury. That's the Route 22. Because they usually stop down the bottom of the hill. They used to. I don't know if they stopped there anymore. Everybody want to cover anything else? I just want to make one um, general. Uh, today's the 11th, right? Today's the 11th? So I know I see you guys put the yeah. video on the program, but. We're going to work on the survey with Northbridge. It's all right now. It's, it's only seven questions. Um, actually, it's eight. But we want to do a, a survey in conjunction with them. So I'm hoping within two weeks we'll get it online so people can, you know, put their thoughts and comments down. So anybody who's watching, you know, watch for our, uh, early May for a survey to come onto our website where people can give us input on um, this proposed service. So thank you all for coming. Thanks for watching. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.